Detective Penguin, your prior work with us has been to such a high standard that I feel confident to approach you with a matter of the utmost delicacy. Put simply, we're swamped with cases, and corruption is rife. We need more hands on deck, and I may have a solution. In recent times, there's been a spate of young child and teen detectives. They are everywhere, and some seem more competent than even our local bobbies. With child labor laws, we can't exactly hire them officially, which is where you come in, Penguin. I need you to check out these accounts, look through the case files, and let me know if they are the real deal. If they are, well, we need them. You'll be managing their efforts on the quiet, like. Yours with all sincerity, Inspector Morrow. Postscript. Burn after reading. Welcome to the Detective Chronicles by Detective Penguin. I had an idea to read some old detective books. I used to read so many of these middle grade detective stories when I was a kid. And they were always teenagers stumbling across crimes and solving them. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to reread them and just see how these teens are getting stuff done. I've got a few books here. I might add a few more. But for now, we have Enid Blyton's Five Find Outers and Dog, The Mystery of the Burnt Cottage, which is book one of the series, The Adventures of the Secret Seven, this one's just for fun. It's a little Christian small book. It's got a little bit of mystery in it. So this was actually the series that got me into readings. The beloved Trixie Belden. I love the Trixie Belden series. Funny story. Mum used to own the whole, pretty much the whole series. And then she sold a whole heap of them. And her daughter ended up going to the bookstore where she had sold those books and started buying them back. So <laughs> I'll try and find a Nancy Drew. If not, obviously I won't. Another Enid Blyton, Famous Five. But yes, there are, they are all children. I think Trixie's like 15. Oh, so many small children. Solving the crimes of the world. And where are the police? So I'm going to investigate and I'll let you know how it goes. Oh, I'm also going to be reading a more recent one, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. It's um, classified as young adult. Now, I've already started reading it and I would probably move it into new adult because I found out the difference between new adult and young adult and I've like got to say, a lot of young adults should be new adult, but that's tea for another time. Detective Penguin is on the case. Excited to delve into the books and rediscover some mysteries and some whodunits. So I think I mentioned early on in the video that I've already started one of the books and it's an audio book and it is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. The case is closed. Five years ago, schoolgirl Andy Bell was murdered by Sal Singh. The police know he did it. Everyone in town knows he did it. 
But having grown up in the same small town that was consumed by the murder, Pippa Fitz and Moby isn't so sure. When she chooses the case as a topic for her final year project, she starts to uncover secrets that someone in town desperately wants to stay hidden. And if the real killer is out there, how far will they go to keep Pip from the truth? A debut YA crime thriller. And I think she's 15. When you're listening to the audiobook, I find it harder to retain people's names and how they look. You're getting the same information, but because I'm not seeing it, I tend to retain different things. Hey, I can Google it. Okay, she's 17 years old. I read somewhere that she was 15, but she's 15, 17. Still a child. <laughs> when you get as old as I am, 17 is baby. So small. Somewhere else says 18. Maybe they change it depending on what version it is. She's a bit older than I thought she was. <laughs> anyway, so that's the audiobook I'm listening to. So we're going to read the first book in this series, which is The Fire Find Out is The Mystery of the Burnt Cottage. Fatty, Larry, Daisy, Pep, Betts and Buster, the dog, turn detectives when a mysterious fire destroys a thatched cottage in Mr. Hicks' garden in their village. Calling themselves The Fire Find Out is and dog, they set out to solve the mystery and discover the culprit. The final solution, however, surprises the five find outers almost as much as it surprises Mr. Goon, the village policeman. When I'm not up to listening to the audiobook, I can read, and this poor book is a wobble tear. Don't know how that happened. Let's get reading. Yesterday, I completed the book one of the five find outers, and the mystery was the mystery of the burnt cottage. And I've got my report here, ready to go. So the teen detectives I was following this time, uh, there's only one teen. There's preteens, and then just one teenager. In the first book, they are only called the find outers or mistaken for the fine doubters but they are in fact the fine outers. We have six members one of which is a dog. The dog's name is Buster. That is a great name and no wonder I used it for my own puppy dog at one point. Oh my notes are flying. The only teenager in this story is in fact Lawrence or Larry, and he is 13. And his sister is Daisy, or Margaret, and she is 12. And there's Philip, or Pip, and he is also 12. Pip's sister, younger sister, Bet, who is 8. And then our final member, arguably the most important, uh, is Frederick Algernon Trotterville. And they give him the nickname Fatty. Personally, we are going to continue calling him Frederick or Frederick Algernon Trotterville. And he is 12 as well. So we've got Larry, Daisy, Pip, Betts, Frederick and Buster. Now in this story, is there murder? No, there is not a single murder. What is the mystery they're solving? Well, Mr Hicks who is a kind of grumpy old man, his garden cottage workroom was set ablaze and his important papers were burnt. And they decide they're going to try and find out who burnt down his cottage. As a detective myself, I did figure out who the bad guy was uh, from the very beginning. 
you know, it's just the way I am. The kids took a little bit longer. The local police, they were on the job. He was, he was, and he was following all the leads. He just happened to drop off at one point. He started uh, chasing the wrong herrings. Um, they were red and he went straight after them and didn't take into account the other evidence. And was it partially the teen detective's fault? Yes. Yes, yeah, it was partially their fault. Larry and Pip, honestly, they could be one person. I could not tell the difference between the two, other than Larry was older. And that was it. Then we have Daisy, who, uh, she's fun. She was the older girl figure. And then we had Betts. She has my heart. She does a lot for the story. Betts is a real member of the group. I see a future in her. She found a lot of clues, or glues as she calls them. And honestly, all the glue belongs to her. As for Buster, it's a dog. A very cute dog who follows clues and gets the job done. Honestly, without Buster, they would never have solved the mystery. And then we have the highly esteemed, the great Frederick Algernon Trotterville, who is best man, best boy. Larry and Pip, honestly, I don't know what to say about them other than they are rude as all heck to our Frederick. They just snap at Frederick all the time. They tell him to shut up pretty much every time he opens his mouth. They need manners. They need manners. Good old Fred. I think he's being portrayed as this know-it-all who just talks about himself all the time, has a big ego. But for me, I don't know. It's true that he did try to talk to himself, but he is an only child. He's in a new town. He's trying to make friends. He's trying to put himself out there. He is energetic. And the way he goes that he's trying to tell them about himself, you know, try to, sure enough, boast. But... It wasn't in a shut up kind of way. I, I kind of found it cute and the information he gave was interesting. Justice for Frederick. It's a big deciding factor in my investigation. Did they do crime? Not the criminals, but the teen detectives. And the answer is yes. Yes, they did. Actually, they did a lot of crime. They, they did steal. Uh, they did trespass. They lied a lot, entered certain places under false pretenses, and yeah, yeah, they are criminals. And did they get away with it? Yeah, because they were finding out who the bad guy was. Unfortunately, most of their crimes were against people who had nothing to do with the crime. But let's just gloss over that because they did solve the mystery. So, to Detective Morrill, I'm going to re recommend them. And by them, I mean Elizabeth and Frederick and Buster. Instead of the five find outers, it should be the three find outers, one of which is a dog. So, it's aimed at middle graders, and I've got to say, it lives up to the middle grade. Yes, they do do crimes, so just keep that in mind, but otherwise, good fun, there is a bit of bullying. Honestly, the only reason they let Frederick Algernon Trotterville join their group is because he owned a dog, Buster, and I think that was just a bit of short sight on their behalf. I think Frederick and Betts are better off uh, growing up, getting married, and becoming a crime-fighting trio with Buster. As a whole, four stars. So now, on to the next case of teen detectives, or pre-teens. Detective Penguin is back. We're on to technically our third book. I've only finished one book, but this is our third book on the go. And it is The Swamp Robber. And it's part of the Sugar Creek Gang series by Paul Hutchins. And it's got Christian themes. The Sugar Creek Gang discovers a disguise hidden in an old tree. 
Does it belong to the bank robber hiding in the swamp? A mysterious map hidden near the tree proves to be even more exciting than the disguise. Before the adventure ends, the gang encounters the robber, helps Bill Collins welcome a new baby sister, and saves the victim of a black widow spider bite. Join the gang as they learn the lesson of sowing and reaping. It's a pretty short book. It's only 128 pages. I'll get started. Hello, detectives, sleuths. I have just finished the swamp rubber. I will talk about that in a minute. I'm going to move on to the next book, which is going to be The Secret Seven. I think it's less than a hundred pages. It's very short <laughs> and sweet and to the point. It's their very first adventure and the Secret Seven super sleuths are already on the trail of a mystery. The gang are dressed in disguise following a lead to a spooky old house in the snow. We are going to follow the Secret Seven now and see how good a detective they are. I'll let you know whether they really are super sleuths or whether it's better off leaving it to the police. I have finished The Swamp Robbers by Paul Hutchins. Let me tell you about the mystery of these child detectives. I think one of them is actually a teen. Most of them are 10 years old. Don't know for sure. They'd never actually listed the ages. So instead I consulted uh, Detective Google. Detective Google actually got back to me and said that um, our main character is in fact 10 years old. We followed the Sugar Creek gang this time, and there is six members. We do, in fact, have a main character that we follow. From his point of view, it is first person, as he told, regaled me with this tale. This is, in fact, the revised edition. He said he had some adjustments to his um, testimony. I think the revised was in 19... 97 but the original was told in 1940 there is a 57 year difference there our main character is william jasper collins uh they call him bill roy gilbert whose nickname is dragonfly leslie thompson who is actually called poetry Daniel August Brown, his code name, his alias is Circus. Big Jim. I, I do not know his actual um, legal name. I only know him from his alias, which is Big Jim. And you may ask, why is he called Big Jim? Well, there's Jimmy Foot, and his name is Little Jim. And little Jim is the youngest. He's younger than 10 years old. It's not told how much younger than 10 years old, but he is younger than all the rest. Now, is there murder in this book? No. But there is a lot of almost murder. But no one was successful in their murder. I think one was an accident. One was on purpose as in a purposeful attempt and the other well it was a mis case of mistaken identity let's just leave it at that for now <laughs> the mystery was there had been a bank hold up and it was said that the robber had run into the swamp and was hiding in the swamp near where our main characters live I think you could say the main mystery was all to do with this sycamore tree 
and it had like a hollow and they found a wig and the scars in it as well as a treasure map. They solve things pretty quickly. The things that come up usually solved within the next chapter and it's just new things crop up. They don't really give you anything to go on to figure out for yourself before the character did, obviously, because we were in first person. It is the testimony of the blog, so we didn't get any surrounding facts. Now, were the teen detectives, or in this case, pre-teen detectives, criminals? They were accused of trespassing. But it turns out the person who accused them of trespassing was trespassing themselves and were doing a much worse job at trespassing. So I think they were allowed on the property, the kids, but the person who was telling them that they were trespassing, that he was trespassing because I don't think the owner of that land actually wanted him there. In fact, I can guarantee that the owner of that land did not want him there. Part of my investigation is finding out whether the local police could have handled what went on. Was the local police doing their job? Yes and no. This is going to be a bit more spoilery from here on out. I don't think anyone cares if I spoil this book, but just in case you were really wanting to read this book with no spoilers, um, you might want to skip to the next bit. Near the very beginning, a young man is found in the swamp and he fits the description of the robber, as in he had dark hair. And a shot went off and the police retaliated by shooting him. Um, he was badly injured. Fortunately, he did not die. He was armed. His gun did go off when the police came along, but he did not fire at them, but they assumed he fired at them. And then he, since he fit the description, they sh shot him. He was in fact innocent. He was holding a gun that misfired. I don't know whether there's any gun laws that say if you have a gun and it misfires, that is technically your fault and therefore the police aren't liable, but I'll leave that to the courts. They didn't really do a good job uh, when they captured the actual robber. Our young detectives did capture the robber and the police just came and picked him up, but they didn't do any further investigative work, you know, gathering of clues at the old house or wherever the bloke had been hiding out. They just were like, oh, we've got our man now. And if not for our young detectives, they would have left an old man bound in, the ha in his home to die. So really, they should have checked ahead, but they did not. So I do think there was a failing of police duty there. Did our detectives do a better job than the police in this book? Yes. I mean, they didn't shoot an innocent man. They uh, captured the robber and they saved the old man that the robber had, well, taken the identity of and was about to murder. Okay, character assessment. Now, Bill... Good old Bill. He has a good heart. You know, he kind of just goes along. He loves hanging out with his friends. It is a bit strange in some places. But the author, instead of just saying, I hung out with my friends and we had great fun. Near the end, he's like, we did this and that because we just really like each other. And we just let each other know that we like each other. I'm like, I think we got that because you're friends and you're part of this same gang. Um, but yes, he really likes his friends. He doesn't have a wish to be a detective. That's his best friend. Poetry is Leslie Thomas poetry. Poetry is said to be mischievous. But I saw nothing really that said he was any more mischievous than the other ones, other than he liked to play a few practical jokes. 
but they weren't mean jokes. He just dressed up as an old man, pretty much. So yeah, poetry is the one that fancies himself a bit of a detective. Dragonfly, he can see things. He's got big eyes and therefore why he's called Dragonfly. So he's the one that spots a lot of things going on around the neighborhood. Circus, I've decided Circus holds my heart because he's a bit more down to earth. He's going through a tough patch in life and He's got, he, he likes climbing trees, he's always climbing stuff. He's just a, a boy. I mean, he's, what, 10 years old? He's, he just likes climbing things and doing somersaults. Little Jim. He's just a sweet, soft boy. He's just a sweet lad who loves the Lord. And then finally we have the leader, the older boy, Big Jim. Because he's the eldest, he makes sure they go home and eat dinner with their family, that they don't get wrapped up in their own stuff, that they're just responsible really and he is obviously bigger and stronger so he helps take down our criminal etc etc. Um, in fact Big Jim and Little Jim it's very cute. Big Jim watches out over our youngest <laughs> Little Jim. It's just cute. The only thing with Bill's re recount of these events is I have no idea what happened to the poor, innocent lad that got shot and his uncle. It's just a loose thread in the wind. Now I'll briefly say that the theology in this is a bit wacky. Especially to do with what makes a, a good person, bad person, uh, at one point the dad is praying and he's like what makes a man good or evil when he's an adult depends on whether he has jesus when he's a, a young boy and i'm like oh well it doesn't really matter when you come to the lord as long as you do and once you have that you change obviously because you are the lord's child that you then live out your life in accordance to what God wishes. And then if they do this, they're a good Christian. Yes, your life should be a witness to God once you become a Christian, but that's not what makes you a Christian. You just either are the Lord's or you aren't. And there is following the Lord and then there is not following the Lord, but it doesn't make you better or worse. And it's just by the grace of God that we all are Christian anyway. So. My recommendation to detective morale is maybe keep an eye out for poetry. He will probably join the police force anyway as a de an actual detective later on. So I don't think we really need to, you know, follow up. I think he'll just join anyway. And I believe that... Um, good old Bill is actually wanting to be a doctor. I think Circus does have the talent for maybe being an undercover agent, something cool like that. I mean, really, I just want him to have the best in life and pursue his own dreams. And with that, we have finished The Swamp Robber. I gave this book a three and a half stars. My assessment is done. Now on to the next lot of teen detectives. Hello, detectives. I am back. And we have completed The Secret Seven. So obviously our group name is The Secret Seven. And the number of members is in fact seven. But they technically have an eighth member. But the eighth member does not get any credit for being part of this Secret Seven. And that is Scamper which is a golden spaniel. Throughout this case, Scamper is, in fact, referenced a lot, so a bit unfair there. We have Peter and his sibling, Janet, and then we have Colin, George, Pam, Jack, and Barbara. I've got to say, I don't know how old they are. I think they are, again, under the age of 10. <laughs> It is not mentioned. I didn't consult Detective Google this time. <sighs> let me, let me go consult. I'm back from Detective Google's office. Detective Google did in fact 
confirm that the ages of these detectives are never mentioned. It's said that was to make the group relatable to whomever was reading it and that they could apply their own age. Unfortunately, I am <laughs> a little older than the targeted age range, so we're going to say that they were in fact preteens because that's the way they kind of acted. Is there murder? There is no murder in this story. There is not even a close murder. No. Did I figure out the mystery? Yes, I did. The whodunner is pretty obvious. I should probably tell you what the mystery was. Well, one of our young detectives, Jack, he was searching for something in the snow and some suspicious people were out late at night with a strange container cage behind their car. And Jack obviously then went and brought together our detectives to find out what were these men doing in the middle of the night with a prisoner squealing. Now are our teen detectives criminals? Two of them are. Some of the others do get light trespassing but these two get definite trespassing and entering into premises that they had no right being in. So two of them would definitely get charged, did they? No, they got away with it. Now were the local police doing their job? Yes. But you don't really hear about the police until the very, very end when it's kind of all shut up shop anyway. They don't get a mention other than the kids going, oh, should we tell the police about this? And them going, nah. So Peter, he's pretty much the leader. He and his sister kind of made the group. He gathers them all together in the back shed and organises who does what. His sister Janet, quite a smart lass. She collected some clues and was generally quite smart. She was quite enthusiastic about finding out more things about this mystery. She was probably the most helpful of the girls of the group. Now Colin does help out. He's probably mentioned more than George, Pam and Barbara, but he's not as mentioned as Peter, Janet or Jack. So he's just there helping out. He's a good lad. Now George and Pam, they both helped out with one of the clues that they end up going to the police with. That's about their only thing that they do, otherwise they're just going along with the flow. Then we have jack -a boy Jack is the one that discovers this mystery. He's one of the ones that should be going to prison. Well, not prison, but he should be disciplined for, well, crimes. Then finally we have Barbara. I don't know why Barbara is part of the Secret Seven. Is this a hate towards Barbara? I don't hate Barbara. I just don't see the point to Barbara. You shouldn't judge people off their looks, but this is what Barbara looks like in the illustration. Barbara did not want to do anything. Barbara, in fact, told Janet that one of the clothes she was getting was useless and why would we need that? Like, why would we need that? They needed it. It was quite essential evidence, in fact. <laughs> and then later on, when the boys are all going out to do some detective work, Janet's like, oh, can we join? Can we come along? And Barbara's like, I don't want to go. So she didn't want to do anything, pretty much. She was just there. So she didn't collect clues. She complained about being there doing this mission. So I do not know why Barbara is part of the Secret Seven. It was a very quick read, this case. It was very straightforward. Nothing too brain-breaking about it. I think Janet and Jack, maybe Peter and Colin, probably pose the most potential. Pam and George have room to grow, so I'm not giving up on them. I'm just saying they, they have room to improve. And finally, Barbara. Barbara should be replaced by Scamper, and I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. But can Barbara come back and prove me wrong? Maybe. 
But first, my rating for The Secret Seven. I'll give it three and a half again. And now we have us find the next potential teen detective. So we've got Trixie, which is a longer one. Or I can just continue on the Enid Blyton train. We are going to do the Famous Five next. Because then we'll get into the actual teen detectives, which is Trixie Belden and then A Good Girl's Guide to Murder as well. Hello detectives, there's been a slight change of plans. So originally I was going to do this Famous Five book, um, The Famous Five and The Mystery of the Emeralds, but I realised this, this is technically not an Enid Blyton book. It is a sequel written by Claude Willier. I considered still reading this one, but then I was like, I should probably go with the actual original beginning ones. So I looked it up at my library and there's an audio book for the Famous Five. The Famous Five. Five on Treasure Island. The very first Famous Five adventure featuring Julian, Dick, and not forgetting tomboy George and her beloved dog Timmy. There's a shipwreck off Kiran Island, but where is the treasure? The famous five are on the trail, looking for clues, but they're not alone. Someone else has got the same idea. Time is running out for the famous five. Who will follow the clues and get to the treasure first? So it's less of a mystery and more of a treasure hunt. All right, to the books. Anyway, Mother and I won't be able to go with you this year. Has Mother told you? Hello, detectives. Welcome back. We have just finished reviewing the case file for Five on a Treasure Island. Now, this was less of a mystery and more of a treasure hunt. So keep that in mind going forward. The group of young detectives that we were following this time were the Famous Five. Due to the name, there are five members, and one of them is a dog. We love to see the dog included as a member. Our members of this Famous Five is Dick, who's 11, Julian, who's 12, Anne, who's 10, and they're all siblings, and then their cousin, who is George. I think her name is Georgina, but she does not go by Georgina, she goes by George. And then, of course, our beloved puppy dog, Timmy. First off, what was the mystery? Well, in this case, they were... Just hunting down a treasure. <laughs> this is in fact their first case. So they did meet during this case. Three children, Dick, Julian and Anne, went to visit their aunt and uncle and obviously their cousin for some holidays. And during their visit, George owns an island and off that island is a ship that sunk and during this case uh the ship is washed ashore onto some rocks and they find a treasure map and the rest goes on from there they use this treasure map to try and find the hidden gold of her great great grandfather or something like that now is there murder there is no murder, there is threats of murder, but there is no murder. There wasn't really a mystery for me to solve before them, I was just following the case. Now, are these detectives criminals? No. Well, there may be a slight case of destruction of property, but to be fair, the destruction of property was because they were escaping from being prisoners at that point. 
Now, as for the police involvement in this one, the police only appeared at the very end, in fact, the last chapter, I believe, and they really didn't do much at all. They didn't even catch the bad guys. The bad guys are, in fact, still free. So... <laughs> We have Julian, who is the eldest. He's probably got the most maturity. That one year gives him a lot. And then we have George, who's probably next prevalent. And without her, really, would any of this had happened? No. No. And then we have Dick. And he helps out a lot too he's actually very important towards the end hello little auntie and then we have Anne who is the youngest and she has a tendency of just sprouting whatever comes to mind into the universe and unfortunately that does get her and them in a little bit of trouble but she's She's 10 years old, what do you expect? And then finally we have Timmy. I don't know whether he's like a wolf or something, but he is a black dog-ish thing. And he's like a, a bit ratty, but he is much beloved by George. And honestly, that dog's pretty smart. Pretty cluey. Uh, he doesn't have any gun safety acknowledgement though uh he sees a gun he does not know what that means so really he should go under a bit of training for gun safety as in what to do when a gun is pointed at you uh <laughs> now there are some other characters and the aunt is sweet she's lovely but the uncle is a bit of a dunce he does a 180 right at the end, but I couldn't forgive him. He's just a really grumpy, really rude, really harsh dad slash uncle. And it's meant to be that he's stressed, but is he? Is it just because of stress? Mm -hmm. But yes, in this case, the bad guys aren't actually caught. Perhaps they get caught in a later story, but it, it's actually an unclosed case. It's a fun enough adventure, but as to the detective prowess, I couldn't really say that any of them stand out. They all did contribute to the case though they're all quite a good team i wouldn't separate them as a team but i think i would need to see further cases in order to give a solid recommendation and it encouraged not becoming a hermit on an island in solitude from the world and it's encouraged friendship and sharing Things. And honestly, in today's society, is that a good message to send? I'm joking. As they say, the journey isn't about the end. It's about the friends you make along the way. And honestly, that's what these five did. It wasn't about the adventure. It was the friends they made along the way. Anyway, so I'm giving it a three stars. Uh, now on to our next mystery. Which is somewhere. So we'll go into that in a second when I find the case file. Which will be one moment. We have our next case file here. Which is Trixie Bowden, The Secret of the Mansion. And this is actually a teen and not a preteen. 
Trixie's summer is going to be so boring with her two older brothers away at camp. But then a millionaire's daughter moves into the next door mansion. An old miser hides a fortune in his decrepit house and a runaway kid starts hiding out in Sleepy Side. So we are going to study this case next. I'll check in soon. See you later, detectives. I read Trixie, so we're 138 pages through. I stopped like one page into a chapter for some reason. Don't ask me why. I well, hello detectives. I've just finished the case file for Trixie Belden. But I have my notes here ready to go. So in this case file, they don't actually have a group name yet. It's just three teens figuring out what's going on. It does later become a group with uh, those three teens and then uh, four others. The three members that we meet in this book are, of course, our leading lady, Trixie Belden, who is 13 years old. Then we have Madeline Wheeler, who just goes via Honey, and she is also 13. And then finally, we meet James Winthrop Frayne the second, and he goes via Jim. And Jim is 15 years old. Now, what was this mystery? Well, it was more of just a search. Similarly to our previous book, it was more of a treasure hunt um, with some twists and turns, twists and turns, twist turn, twist turn, some twists and turns along the way. In the beginning of the story, Trickley's father finds Mr. Frayne, their old neighbour, passed out in front of his house. And so he's taken to hospital. And that triggers uh, Trixie being a bit interested in this old house because he's been known as a miserly old man. But he could have a fortune hidden in this old mansion. Uh, she also has new neighbours moving in up the hill. And that turns out to be Honey, who is her age. And very quickly, they become friends. They go up to old Frayne's house and they meet Frayne's nephew, Frayne's great nephew. And that great nephew is Jim. And they decide in order to help Jim out from his circumstances, they would help him find this fortune Trixie is pretty much the only one between the three that really thinks there is a fortune hidden in the mansion. Um, the other two are like, it's just a wreck. There's nothing hidden here. First of all, is there murder? No. There is death. And there are many, many accidents and injuries. I think every second chapter had some sort of injury taking place. There were so many injuries going on, it was like every single day they had a couple of injuries. So, <laughs> accident prone for sure, but no murder. Did I figure out the who done it? Well, it wasn't a who done it, it was just a search for treasure. So, there was really. No, please don't come to my house. Since I don't know where I was up to, um, there was no way to figure out where the treasure was. 
there were no clues. It was just they searched and you found out whether there was a fortune or wasn't a fortune. Now, are our teen detectives criminals? Well, they did trespass. Sorry, I guess yes. Now, the police. The police weren't really mentioned. Um, there was nothing really for them to get involved in. Um, except for stuff that happened ages before. I'm pretty sure they weren't being negligent at that point, but they just... Just the situation sucked. <clears throat> Another note I've got here is there be dogs. There are multiple dogs in this story. Of our main girl, Trixie Belden. So she has three brothers. One is younger than her and she often babysits him, hangs out. And then two older ones, which we do not meet, they are away at a summer camp. And uh, she likes horses. And she's very adventurous. She's rather outgoing. She learns to appreciate her family a lot more through this story. Sometimes grumbles, but not in an annoying way. She grumbles, but she still gets the job done in the end. And she's a blonde. This, the pictures sort of have her having red hair. Um, but she is, in fact, a, a blonde. There goes one redhead down the drain. Um, but still love her. She's great. Then we have Honey, who's the new neighbour. And she is the daughter of a very rich family. And she's very often, I guess, alone. She grew up mostly with governesses being sent off to camps and schools. Um, so she's rather... I wouldn't say neglected, but she is lonely. And she thrives under the friendship with Trixie. She's very sweet. She offers to, you know, go riding with Trixie. And she is very generous. She thinks she's a bit of a wimp, but really she's quite courageous when it comes down to it. She doesn't back down from everything. She still comes and tries to meet the challenge. Before moving to the country, Honey was in the city and she had a lot of nightmares she was very scared very nervous with her friendship with trixie she begins to flourish and just be her inner self and yeah her parents aren't cruel they're just they're very busy business orientated and the mother is very social so she's always hosting parties or going to social events which leaves our poor honey a bit lonely our final real main character in this book is jim so jim is a runaway he's running away from his extremely abusive stepfather He's suffered from quite a lot of abuse. He explains a couple of things that his stepfather has done to him um, over the course of his life. And he is now 15. He's, he's a bit distrustful. She's, he's very like, I want to get out of here. So he's on edge. But he's also very nice. Once the girls sort of introduce themselves and pose not a threat and are actually really kind to him, he actually is just as kind, very complimentive. He makes sure they know that he appreciates them. And he's a redhead. So I did get my redhead. It just wasn't Trixie. It was Jim. So, you know, quick side note, uh, Jim was my first ever book boyfriend. When I talk about book boyfriends and stuff, obviously, I mean, I always liked them with the character they were meant to be with. But I just really like them as a character but i never look at a bloke and be like oh if he could only be with me because they're fictional i'm not that deluded yet part of what i love about these characters is honey and trixie pretty much early on in meeting jim they're both like i want to adopt you so honey's like my family will adopt you you'll have great fun and meanwhile, Trixie's like, my family 
should adopt you because I've got brothers and you'll have great fun. And it's just an adoption session. Everyone's just like, I want to adopt you. Even a character late in the book is like, oh, I could adopt him. And I'm like, let's just all adopt him. He will be our combined adopted son. Jim is very talented in all sorts of survival skills and riding and shooting. And Trixie's just inquisitive and learns quickly. And Honey is just supportive and kind. So there's always an, a nice balance. I think the police would be really good having them on our side. My conclusion is that this case file gets a 4.5 from me. It's not a full five stars because, well, at the end of the book, there's one very big plot that isn't wrapped up and it leads into the next book and not everything is tied up nicely. It gets a 4.5, which I think is reasonable, you know? Trixie Belden. Oh. Absolutely love. Love it. Adore it. Since I've already introduced A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, this is technically our final case study for this video. And it will be Nancy Drew, The Hidden Staircase. Helen's Aunt Rosemary has been living with her mother at the old family mansion and they have noticed many strange things. They have heard music, thumps and creaking noises at night and seen eerie shadows on the walls. Could the house be haunted? Just as soon as she hangs up the phone, a strange man visits Nancy's house to warn her and her father that they are in danger because of a case Nancy's father is working on. This warning leads Nancy and her father Carson to search for the missing Wiley Wharton who can prove he signed away his land to the railroad. Will Nancy be able to find the missing landowner and discover how these mysteries are related? So this is the next case we'll be working on. I'll try and work on A Good Girl's Guide to Murder too. detectives. Quick update, I have finished Nancy Drew and now I'm trying to get through our final case. I'm 33% through the order book and I'm listening at two times speed. I might crank it up to three times speed just to get through it. And let's just say it's not, it's not my favourite. It is a chore to get through this one and I can only say that it's because the main character is so annoying. She is jumping to all the conclusions. The tiniest clue she'll go on a whole tangent about with a minute before she continues. Five, six people have been the bad guy in her mind so far. Hold your hobby horses a little bit but I'm gonna soldier through. Let's get into the final case reviews, shall we? Howdy detectives, welcome. As we wrap up these case files, 
Oh, what a journey it's been looking through all these case files. It's been something, especially these final couple. First up, we have Nancy Drew, The Hidden Staircase. Um, so this case is actually Nancy Drew's second. I couldn't access her first case, so we went with the second. It's just a singular teen detective, and she is 18 years old, Nancy Drew. Um, she does some have some help in this case with Helen. She does help out a lot with this case, so she gets a mention. Nancy gets a bit Scooby-Doo-esque. I'm just saying that Scooby-Doo crew would be proud. Nancy is asked by her friend Helen to help out Helen's aunt and her aunt's mother because spooky things, strange things keep happening in the house so they want to track down who this ghost is. Simultaneously, Nancy's father, Carson, is getting threatened because of some acquirement of land. Some bloke's gone missing but his signature has been not witnessed. They're in a bit of a kerfuffle because somebody's now saying that they didn't get permission and they'll be paid out more. So Nancy has to find out who is being a ghost and also try and find her father after her father is first threatened and then goes missing. Is there murder? No, but there is attempted murder. Now did I figure out the whodunit? Yes I did. It's not super hard to figure out. The dynamics of it is a little bit thingy, but I did figure out pretty much everything from early on. There's this one mention of a certain thing from the past, and I'm like, oh, that's probably how that world works. And I was correct. You know, Nancy trucked along and was zooming across the country and through the house and all manner of things. She was impressive, I tell you. Is Nancy a criminal? No. In fact, she makes a point of following the law. Even when she's doing this chase, she stops for red lights, she doesn't go over the speed limit. So it's actually very impressive. She's, I think, our first detective that hasn't broken the law. In fact, I thought she might be trespassing at one point, but she didn't. She went through all the right avenues and everything, so I was like, what a lass. Also along with her operating um, within the law, she actually does work alongside the local police a lot. Um, so the police do their job, she helps them out, they help her out, they're very open and accommodating to sending over like a patrol and everything. It's the peak performance between the police and our team detective. It's a beautiful thing to witness. And it all gets wrapped up quite nicely. We'll, we'll get to Helen first. Now, Helen has met a bloke two months ago. And, you know, she's smitten. He doesn't live in the country. They write letters to each other. It's very cute. Um, my only issue is um, he's just proposed over the phone. Asked permission from her father as well. And her father, smartly enough, was like, oh, wait to announce the engagement until you're back in country, mate. But it is two months and they haven't even been around each other. Don't get me wrong, letters are great. They can reveal a lot more than a conversation because you just put your heart down. Uh, but at the same time, a bit of face-to-face -face, uh, never hurt either. Otherwise, other romance, um, Ned, we don't know Ned, no, in this book, it's Dirk. Dirk has about one page he's mentioned in, and in that one page you come to not like Dirk. Nancy, however, fancies Dirk. I am not a Dirk fan. Doesn't get the approval from me. Dirk is said to be impatient. He doesn't like to wait, as Carson says. And Nancy's like, ha, yeah, especially not for case, like, mystery stuff. So he's not supportive of her career choice. And uh, honestly, Dirk sounds like a bit of a, a Dirk. Um, also, sad to say, 
Nancy is a blonde. Now I did do my research. Nancy becomes a Titian haired lady in later books because of a printing error and then the authors just ran with it. But she does in fact have blonde hair. It's very sad. Now my recommendation. We should definitely recruit Nancy. She's not hiding evidence or anything. She works alongside the police. She's really cluey. She's constantly thinking about things and she's not afraid to get in and search places herself. But she also operates within the law. And she's quite conscientious of that. Is it because her father is a lawyer? Maybe. And maybe that's what we need. Tarot 10 would recommend Nancy Drew. In this case, I gave a 4.5. So, honestly, that's a pretty great score. I'm trying to delay it because I don't really want to talk about our final kind of case. Brace yourselves. All right, detectives. Our final case. Honestly, the most frustrating. Out of all our teen detectives, this detective took the cake the most annoying. I ended up going through this case file, it was an audio case file, uh, at 3.5 speed just to get through it. Believe me, I didn't miss anything by going on that, that fast. In fact, if I could go faster, I would have a good girl's guide to murder. We followed teen detective Pippa Fitz Amobi. And she is 17, 18. She's applying for like, colleges, universities, I don't know what you call it. And her nickname is Pip, or as her, her helper calls her Sarge. Honestly, the best part of it is that. <laughs> now, P Pippa doesn't do it alone. She does, in fact, thank and say that she couldn't have done it without this person. And this person is Ravi Singh. Honestly, without Ravi, I would have given up on everything in this book. She's investigating an old case about a teenage girl who goes missing, and it's suspected that her boyfriend, Sal Singh, murdered her and then took his own life shortly after her disappearance. The entire town thinks he did it, except for of course, Sal's family and our detective, Pippa. And so she's doing a school paper, so she's collecting clues to find out did Sal really murder this high school girl? Or was it perhaps someone else? Is there murder? Yes, there is. There's actually uh, several deaths, several murders. A lot of just debauchery and uh, just horrible stuff happening. Did I figure out the who done it? Um, I did and I didn't. I figured out one of them, but I also had a suspicion which turned out to be false. I was also incorrect at the same time. <laughs> Is the detective a criminal? Absolutely. She needs to go to prison. She impersonates. She trespasses. Uh, she uses drugs. Uh, she conceals evidence which she never, she never turns over. She's got her own sense of justice slash morality. Yeah, she does a lot of criminal activities. A lot. Instead of getting praised, she should probably be going to prison. And was the local police doing their job? Not really. No, the police weren't doing their job. Well, they were, but not well. Near the end, they start pulling their heads in and they follow along with our Pippa's reports and stuff rather than just doubting her, which I was thankful for. I'm glad that they didn't just be like, oh, yeah, delusional Kelly. But yeah, they, they didn't investigate properly in the first place, which led to all this other stuff happening. Do I recommend Pippa to be an asset to the police? No. No, 
I mean, she does do her research, but at the same time, she is a criminal. She breaks the law to do it. Which would mean all her evidence probably wouldn't hold up in court because they could argue that it was done through illegal ways. And also, she's really headstrong. She rushes into things far too quickly. She doesn't call for backup. So, no. Now, spoiler alert. Spoiler. Spoiler. If you don't want spoilers, skip forward, please. Okay, now that they're gone. I think the most scathing thing about this story is they kill the dog. Yep, they kill the dog. So that's first off, just a big blow to the story. Now there is a lot of prejudice in town against Sal's family and a lot of people saying, oh, he did it and they really don't know for sure. I mean, the girl's body is never found. It's just all circumstantial. The fact that everyone thinks that Sal did it off basically no evidence is really dumb. Okay, so after our pup dies, right, it's like a realization that this person could actually kill her. And so she is all like, I'm quitting this investigation. I'm not going to do any more because I don't want them to move on to my family after killing my dog. And then she starts yelling at Ravi, our baby boy. And so she's just angry, lies to him for no reason, uh, to make him safe. I don't know how that would make him safe other than he'd go on trying to investigate by himself and get himself killed. Like, seriously. Anyway, he figures out. He figures out that she's just trying to protect him. He's pretty smart, so he, he cottons onto it and he's, he's just like, oh, pull your head in. We're afraid that this person's going to murder, so we'll, we'll just leave them alone and let them murder in the future as well. Yeah, because that makes sense. not our main character she's got a weird twisted sense of moral justice that just doesn't make sense so it's revealed that the girl who went missing was a very mean hateful bullying cruel girl she bullied she supplied like drugs she didn't think twice about sharing private pictures or uh, the fact that the drugs she was selling they were used to sexually assault people. She did not give a damn. She was obviously a very cool girl. She manipulated people, like actual manipulation. Did she deserve to die? No. But at the same time, Anyway, our main girl in her final speech is like, yeah, she's not the angel you all painted her as. She was cruel and mean. But at the same time, her father, her father didn't let her grow. Like, if she hadn't been under her father, she could have blossomed. She could have blossomed into a beautiful butterfly. No, she liked being cruel. She knew what she was doing was wrong, and she did it anyway, because she thought it was fun. So, yeah, no. Was the father a sod? Yes. But make the people accountable, be accountable for their own actions. Don't try to palm it off to some other thing. No. She was horrible. And as for this other case to do with her best friend's sister, she also withheld evidence about that. When, again, she wasn't driving and the other bloke was driving. And yes, did she conceal, but, like, if she'd just come forward and confessed to it, she might have done, like, some time or whatever, but you can't just pick and choose who goes to prison over what. This other girl needs... And if her friend is like, oh, you said my sister to prison. Your sister sent herself to prison. (laughs) 
Go sit down. Do the crime. Now she do the time. But she doesn't, because a teen detective conceals all that. Also, Pippa tends to jump on any evidence at all. She's like, oh, they did it. And then another person pops up, oh, they did it, because da, 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 da. and all of it's just speculation. I'm like, oh, I don't need all this speculation. Like, yes, you need to, like, speculate a little bit. To be like, why would they do that? But she jumps at every single one. Like, please, just stop. Anyway, best part of this book is Ravi Singh. Um, he's a good lad. I only wish the best for Ravi Singh. I hope he achieves all his dreams in life. Here's the thing, I like the fact that they incorporated like voice memos and phone calls and etc etc but I did not like the case at all. I'm gonna yeah, probably give it a 2 and that's that. <sighs> and that concludes our case files. All wrapped up nicely. So our final rundown of our cases. So we had Pippa Fitzmoby in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. <laughs> then we have Nancy Drew. What a star pupil. What a brilliant teen detective. Uh, 4.5. We have Trixie Belden, also a 4.5. Honestly, I look forward to reading more of Trixie. Um, then we have Famous Five, which again... 3.5, I think they gave that one. Then we have Secret 7, and another 3.5. Sugar Creek Gang. I mean, they're not very detective-y, but it was a good read. Um, I think I gave it a 3. And then a Five Find Out is... And Dog. Love them. Again, I think Betts and Frederick, Algon and Trotterville, and Buster should make a group and join our task force and the others should learn not to bully Frederick Aldercon on Trotterville and then I might give them a chance so there you go detectives if you've read any or all of these let me know what your deduction was for these case files thank you birds for squawking uh, comment below your thoughts on my deductions, whether I was right, incorrect, or otherwise. And I shall see you all in the next case files. This is Detective Penguin, signing out. <laughs>